Big and competed, um, you know, physical football game, um, but uh, the resiliency, the uh, the ability to continue to just uh, play the next play. Uh, really proud of that. Um, a lot of really positive things, some things that uh, we got to clean up before we uh, we get to this week in, in Tuscaloosa. A uh, really good football team that we're playing. Um, they're playing well, all three phases of the football game. Um, their quarterback's playing extremely well, been accurate with the football down the field. Uh, obviously, he's extremely dynamic with his feet as well. Uh, defensively, uh, they're creating a bunch of negative plays, uh, hitting the quarterback sacks and uh, tackles for loss. And uh, special teams are, are really good. So a uh, huge test for us, uh, one that uh, we'll be excited for and, and uh, got to focus on our preparation here this week. So open it up. Coach, you mentioned the physicality you guys played with. When you flipped on the tape, just what jumped out about your offensive line and kind of what, I guess, what kind of statement does it make to have that sort of success against what was the best run defense in the SEC before Saturday? Uh, they played extremely physical. Uh, I thought they did a really good job uh, with everything that was, was going on uh, from the perspective of what we we're seeing defensively from them. Mm-hmm. Uh, the communication was elite. Coop did a great job getting everybody on the same page. Uh, our running backs were, were really solid with the football, pressing their aiming points. Uh, bouncing when they need to. They made some plays, uh, but running tough, too. Uh, moving the pile uh, during the course of the ball game, too. Uh, initial contact might have been at 3, 4, 5, and, and finding a way to, to eke out more yards there and, and uh, you know turn third down into a short yard situation and or uh, getting a first down on some of those runs. So all in all, really good performance from those guys, offensive line, uh, tight ends, and the running backs. You talked about the importance of crowd noise the past two weeks, now going on the road in a hostile environment. What did you guys learn from that Florida game that maybe can help you this week? Yeah, uh, end of the day, uh, we got to do a great job of communicating. Um, you got to focus on your job and uh, be dialed into that. Uh, it's 11 on 11 when you're inside the line. So, um, you know, we've continued to work that. Um, believe we'll be, be ready for it when we uh, hit game day. As Milton and his receivers continue to build that connection, what would you say is the biggest contributor as to why we haven't seen more production from them at this point in the season? Uh, um, you know, there, there's a few things fundamentally that Joe did uh, that caused a, a couple passes to be a little bit off target. There's a couple catches that we got to make. Uh, end of the day, uh, we got to continue to grow that way. We do have great belief in, in our guys and uh, where we can get to. Coach, you said after the game you hadn't been a part of one like that in terms of scoring. Would you get into a game like that from a from a head coach managing standpoint? How different is that? Is was there things that when you rewatched from a management standpoint that you have to call and do a game differently in that style versus the shootout style that typically your offense is a part of? Yeah, you second guessing some of my calls or what? Oh, I'm asking if the, uh, if you got to yeah, make some. Se- you second guess some of your calls post game. Uh, listen, each game uh, you hear me say it. Uh, each each Saturday uh, essentially is a new season. Uh, each game unfolds and the identity of the game takes place during the course of the game. Um, you got to manage all those situations. You know, from from play calls to um, you know what decisions you're making in, in special teams, uh, all of it, and and um, so. Um, proud that we, we got a win, and, and um, you continually evaluate what you're doing in all areas, and then also uh, try to push those lessons forward, too. Coach, with the transition from Coach Gos last year and now Coach Hosley, and you guys have always talked about, you know, play calling and the game plan is all communal with everybody involved yep. in it. How's that operation gone? What can you tell us about how the operation is yeah, going? Re- really call pretty play? seamless. Um, the transition, uh, Joey's been with me for. I mean, since 2006, we've been together in some form or fashion, except for a couple of years. And, and um, so uh, the communication from up top, what we're seeing, what we're doing, um, you know, the adjustments that we make from drive to drive based on uh, defensive structure really hasn't changed much at all. Josh, how fun was it to flip on the tape of the defense and, and watch your defensive line play some physical football? Man, um, just you know, really proud of the effort. Um, all eleven that were out there on the football field, uh, up front, you know, front six, front seven, um, and in particular our front four, uh, just played uh, played really good football. Man, they they came off the ball. Uh, they were destructive in the run game. Guys snagging off and making plays on backdoor cuts, uh, playing with gap integrity. Second level fit it extremely well, and then the ability to get after the quarterback, you know. With just a front four rush, too, um, thought those guys did a, a really good job of changing the way the game's played. I feel like they are continuing to improve as we go through this season. Um, you know, proud of the effort. Uh, we're going to need a great one from them uh, this Saturday, too. 
Coach, uh, Ramel made a lot of plays for you guys last season, stepping up. He's had some plays that he probably would like to have back this season, yeah. another one on Saturday. How do you guys get him going a little bit and make sure that some of the plays that he's missed don't become mental? Yeah, in this game, there's a really fine line. Um, and I say that and, and um, until you watch the tape and, and truly understand everything that's going on, I think it's tough to truly understand. Um, you know, last Saturday, this coming Saturday, the Saturday after, you got to do the ordinary things at an extremely high level, and that just happens through your preparation and your practice. And uh, you got to wipe the previous one clean. Uh, you got to take the lessons forward with you, uh, but you got to wipe it clean, good or bad. And you guys have heard me say that before. So um, Ramel's played really well, and um, got great trust that he'll play extremely well uh, this Saturday. On the on the passing game, obviously the explosive plays weren't there the other day. Uh, d is there a personnel issue? Do you feel like you have the right personnel for, to have that explosive passing game the rest of the year? Absolutely, we got, we've had guys open, and we haven't hit them. Um, you know, communication's been off at times. Um, we just got to be a little bit better. Um, it wasn't pretty on Saturday. I'll be the first to admit that, um, but uh, it's not that far off either. Uh, we got to do ordinary things at a really high level. Bryce at Easton continues to really yeah. come on and play really consistent football for you all. Was there a moment in time that you noticed where he kind of seemed to morph, maybe mentally made the light bulb came on a little bit more to where the consistency was all of a sudden there? Well, I do think there's been consistent and constant growth from him throughout our time here with him. Um, I do feel like, um, you know, late training camp, early part of the season, the consistency of his mindset, um, being able to attack every rep every single day, um, has changed and, and continued to mature, and, and uh, you know, that's why he's playing the way that he is. He, he's become a really good practice player. You can count on him being consistent every single day. Uh, that's led to his growth and, and him playing the way that he is inside. Alabama is a team that gets after the quarterback at a really high level. What are some things that you guys can do offensively to try to slow <laughs> that down, keep your quarterback clean? Yeah, uh, um, you know. I'm going to say this, and it's kind of on repeat from last week, too. You've got to have some efficiency in the run game. Um, you know, you get into long yardage situation, these guys are going to be able to pin their ears back and, and come after the quarterback. They're multiple in, in what they do. Um, all five guys got to operate together in the run game, but uh, you got to be in sync in, in your pass protections, too. And you got to get the ball out on time. Um, there's going to be a bunch of one on one matchups out on the outside. You got to go win some of those matchups and, uh, and uh, be accurate with the football. So it's going to take all 11. Um, they all play a piece in, in what goes on uh, in the run game and in the pass game, too. Josh, he heading into the season, you know, obviously you never know exactly what's going to happen. But when you looked at that running back room and, and you looked at what you had up front, did, did you suspect that, that the running game could be this, this sort of consistent and could be this deep and this sort of versatile? Yeah, I, I mean, in this game, it changes uh, from year to year, but and sometimes week to week, too. And, and uh, I did think that we had a chance to be a very mature, physical football team up front. The three running backs that uh, you alluded to all were playing their best football. Uh, they had the best understanding of, of what our, our schemes were. Fundamentally, they were at their best. I thought they, they had a chance. Uh, they had a chance to be a group that... Uh, we do a really good job in the, in the run game and, and uh, at the line of scrimmage. So, um, you guys know this. Uh, guys have gotten or people have gotten caught up in the in the past game um, numbers at times with us, uh, some of the explosive plays. But uh, the the bread and butter, of what we do, it all starts with the run game. Over here in the back, uh, James Pierce Jr., D. Williams, earning Player of the Week honors for the SEC. How does that make you feel, and how can you talk about their performance? Yeah, excited for, for both of those guys because uh, they continue to grow um, in how they prepare. Um, they continue to grow in their understanding of, of what we're doing uh, and, um, you know, are playing their best football right now. Two guys that continue to just invest and grow, and uh, that's why they're playing the way that they are. Extremely proud of those guys. How similar would you say that the quarterback and cornerback positions are as far as the praise and criticism they get and the kind of thick skin that they need at that position? Quarterback and corner? Yeah. Yeah. Um, everybody notices when it's not right, uh, for sure. And um, you make some plays, everybody notices that too. So the further you get away from the ball, the more obvious it is, um, you know, what plays you made and, and what, didn't, what you didn't make. When you look at Jalen Milrow on tape studying Alabama, when is he at his best? What, what situations 
for him is when he thrives. Yeah, he's made a bunch of plays from inside of the pocket, uh, pushing the football uh, down the football field. His ability, um, you know, if you don't have rush integrity to, to get out and make plays with his feet, uh, is something that pops out on the tape. And, and then he obviously, like when the ball is in his hands uh, and he's a part of the run game, he's dynamic. So uh, he's somebody that you got to have bottled up, you know, every snap. He's, uh, he's a dynamic playmaker. Did see Omar Norman Lott or David Hobbs. Any status updates on those guys and also Mincy? Yeah, I uh, believe all those guys will, will be ready uh, as we go through this week. Um, anticipate anticipate uh, those guys being ready to go. Mincy also. Yeah. Last question. Joe's a pretty confident guy. Um, did not play his best game the other night. How is his confidence now? Do you feel like you need to boost him up at all, or is he does he need any of that? I mean, I think, you know, when, when you don't play your best football, you've got to be able to wipe it clean. When you play your, your best football, you've got to be able to wipe it clean, too. And um, at the end of the day, have a, a routine that takes you to kickoff so that you are putting yourself in a consistent position to go play your best. Joe's been really mature in how he has prepared. Um, there's some things fundamentally that uh, he's done really well that he didn't do in, in the last one. Um, we got to we got to be a little bit better in the pass game. That's him. That's you know the wideouts. It's it's everybody. Thank you, coach. Appreciate it. You guys have a great day.